Alright boys, today I'm standing here because I want to show you a game called Skyweaver. This is not sponsored or anything like that. I signed up to the beta of the game about 3-4 weeks ago and I got a couple of beta codes just to test the game. It's going to be an NFT slash play to earn card game so we're going to look at the white paper as well, look at the team and because I'm a card player by heart, I thought this might be something for you as well that you might be interested in. Let's take a look at the tutorial and how the game actually looks like, how it plays. Because compared to most other play to earn games out there, they don't have a working product and this one has one. So let's see. I would assume if you guys ever played something like Hearthstone, it's going to be a similar concept. You can drag stuff around, you can attack. Awesome. That sounds Reduce so bad. To zero to win the game. Yeah, usual concept. That's okay. your mana. You mm -hmm. have one available. Awesome. This means you can play cards that cost one. Yes. Drag a card onto the battlefield to play it. Great. Mm -hmm. Units are asleep when first played. Okay. They need to wait a turn before attacking. Like usual. Okay. Voice acting, shut up. And their cards. Here it comes. I will just mute the game so I can talk over it. Wow, the voice acting sucks. But hear me out. It's not about the voice acting, it's about the card game itself. And so far, after one single turn, the interesting part is that you can use a hero actually in the game. Usually in card games, you have like a hero as the character you select, and they have a hero power and effect that you can use once per turn, but you can't use them as a cut. You can't attack with them. We can direct things around like this. We can hit the 2-2, destroy that. Then we can summon the boulder. Yeah, this feels smooth. You played in your browser. There's nothing you need to download. You have the history on the other side, so you can see what happened. But card game itself, working product, looks all right. I don't hate it. And you even have a graveyard. And then eventually, you just dealt enough damage to defeat the enemy hero. And I guess that's how you win the game. Obviously, like other cutkins, there are going to be multiple keywords to it as well. So, for example, you have charge, where you can attack immediately, a battle cry effect, where when you play a minion, something happens. Basically, if you ever played Hearthstone or Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh, imagine the effects you have in those games put into this game as well. Then we get this XP overview after a game. I think they have a similar thing in Yu-Gi-Oh, at least in Duel Links, and they also have that in, I guess, games like Call of Duty. And for level up, we get Ada, we get some Cardano, which is down at 266, didn't even reach $3. Terrible product, fits bad. Here's the thing about the tutorial. I have the feeling that it's just going to explain us what each of those keywords are going to do. And the keywords for most cards are going to be play the card, destroy the card, or read the card text. So I think let's go back to the menu and explore what we have on this site. In the top right, we got play, library, ranks, and market, starting with the library. That is just everything we unlocked, I guess, because those are the three cards we just got. We can see all the cards that are locked. If we have a card that is locked still, how can we get it? We can buy it for 50. I think the difference between base, silver, and gold, the three rarity tiers up there, is really just how the border looks like. You can also hover over it, which tells you the basic cards are non-tradable, so those are just cards you unlock by leveling up. They are going to be in your collection. The silver cards are tradable through Conquest and Leaderboard. And the golden cards can also be traded, but there's a limited supply, one through Conquest. So basically, if you would like to be dripped out and just flex in poor people, then get the golden cards over time and make your deck look pretty. Interesting is that you can't craft cards. By that I mean, usually in a game like Hearthstone, that's at least my go-to example, you have like a different currency in the game. So besides like the coin itself, you also have another currency, like let's say dust and crypto blades to make something better. And in card games like Hearthstone, you would just disenchant the cards that you have, get rid of them, and then you can get a currency to create them for free. But I guess here it's going to be like, you have the card, you sell it, get money, and then buy other cards with that. And because a certain percentage of that is probably going to be burned or put back into the market based on the tax and the transaction fee, I think that's just how the economy is going to work. So they always get like a little bit of money back for every transaction made. But that's only what I'm thinking. It also shows you related decks down there. So you can see where a card is used in. It will then show up over here. You can buy the entire deck. Oh, that's cool. Let's see, number two is ranks that we can take a look at. And we just see who is number one in America. So they just add bacon. So do have a leaderboard. I think the top 500 people in this open beta are going to receive some rare golden card that is going to be like a collector's rare. Something like the initial NFT drop when it comes to a game. Four weeks per season. Rewards are given every week during a season. Week start and end on Monday. There are two leaderboards, Discovery or Constructed, and they have different leaderboards and sets of rewards. Focus on one or try to increase your rewards for both. Play, win, own. The higher you rank by winning games, the bigger and better the rewards to reap. In Hearthstone, you get something like a chest of stuff for free once a month. And in Legends of Rune Terror, the card game by Riot, you get one every single week. We have like four little things in there. 
The cool thing here is that you can get that for two different leaderboards. I can click on the player as well, so I have like a profile that everybody can look at. You can be like, oh, position 133. In constructed, he's number one. Win rate, 93%. That's pretty good. You can see the achievements. That's pretty cool. Let's take a look at the market though. On the market, I would assume you can just buy all the cards that are given to you randomly that are not part of the basic set. Let's say we take the amalgam, which looks pretty cool. Here we can buy the golden one. Wait, why is the golden one so much cheaper than the silver one? If golden is limited supply and silver is just one through conquest, maybe we can't use the golden card in certain modes? This is weird. Wouldn't you also think that gold is worth more than silver just because it's rare and it's limited and we gotta read the white paper to find out what all of that means, I think. In total, there are 497 cards. I would assume because we just got three cards for free in the base set, there should be like 500 cards in total. And I would like to see what happens when we click bulk buy. We have all those different options on the left side to filter. Mana cost 11, no, 10. What is like a big card? How about the Undragon? Lifesteal summon to Zomboids. What's a Zomboid? Death, do one damage to the enemy hero. I like it that in different card games, I've been playing a couple recently, that they have the exact same mechanics, so something happens when the creature dies, something happens when you play a card, they all have the exact same mechanics, but they give it a different name. It's called like Death Rattle, Death Wish, Death Last Whisper, and more things. When it just cards get destroyed, here's something that happens. We could also add all those five cards to order, if I went where to click on buy, or yes. We have them in our card at the bottom, and then we can see the price. Oh, that's kind of cool. The card market is actually a market, like, Think about eBay or like Amazon, for example. We can select the cards you would like to have, and then you buy them from whoever is going to sell them for the lowest price. Because I would assume if I try to sell the card, I can sell it for like 8.5 if I want to, or I can sell it for 9. And then maybe somebody browsing would buy it, and I assume if I increase the quantity, the price is going to go up. Honestly, I always like the concept of having an actual market in the game, so every single card you have can be sold, so you can make money with it. But here's one problem that I see. And that's just from the eyes of a content creator. In case you've never seen my main channel, um, I'm a Hearthstone creator mainly, besides the crypto stuff here. And the problem I see is, with this concept right here, is how about I buy a terrible card, let's say Grave Royal would be terrible, and I buy all 17 of those, and then I make content for this game, and I push a deck surrounding cards like Grave Royal, making the card really good, or at least make it appear that the card is good, and then I have the entire supply and I sell it back to you guys. So depending on how popular the game is going to be when it gets fully released, I hope they have like some limit when it comes to the price just so you can't just manipulate that too much. Because if this thing over here costs 100, I would just buy all five and sell them for like 500 each. Honestly, that's, that's kind of fun though because you can day trade cards in a game. I'm just worried that people might abuse that. What I'm also a little bit confused by is the current balance. I think because their coin is not live yet, we're gonna again find out in a second, it doesn't show you how much money that is in US dollars. So it tells us with 0.00. .00. But the moment it goes live, it would also show us the actual price of cards. Oh yeah, I think in order to use the site, you gotta install a different app called Sequence. Yeah, this one over here, which will then be used for the in-game currency as well. I think they use that just so you never have to pay gas fees when it comes to anything. Like, imagine you would need to pay gas fees when you buy a single cut. Or like you finish a battle, like in Crypto Blades, for example. That's so why they're gonna use Sequence App to either reduce the gas fees or just have no gas fees at all. You can receive stuff over here. We can buy coins on Matcha, Sushi Swap and Uniswap. Ah, oh, the, the thing is, on Sushi Swap, if you buy using Ethereum, same with Uniswap, and you have to pay the gas fees, that's expensive. If we can buy it on SushiSwap using something like Matic, for example, so the Polygon network, and we only have to pay like a fraction of a cent in gas fees, that would be great. Official tokens, important. It's currently in closed beta, no official tokens occur. Okay, that answers my question. So they don't have a token yet, meaning when you see that you can buy a carton game for let's say 50 tokens, and it tells you zero US dollars, we don't know how much that is going to be worth. I would assume if the prices are going to be like in Yu-Gi-Oh that common cards sell for like 5 to 10 cents, probably even less because you can just buy it online, right, from any other player out there. And there's going to be a way bigger audience, but like rare cards and collector's rares? I don't know, those cards might be worth a couple hundred dollars, maybe a thousand for like the super rare cards. And then apparently if you live in any of those countries over here, you will also be restricted from playing it, so you gotta use a VPN. Which means if you live in North Korea, even more bad news for you. But yeah, I could not find the white paper, which is weird. And I also couldn't find the team. I would just say, when it comes to like, other NFT games out there, this is the first good game that I see. Like, let me explain. 
Games like Star Atlas, for example, look amazing. Alluvium looks beautiful. But when it comes to like the art style and the working product, most games out there, and let's be honest here, we've seen Crypto Blades, it's really just like 2D or like very basic coding when it comes to like the actual gameplay. I would say most of us don't play any of those play to earn games because of the gameplay, but because of the part that we earn something. I could see Skyweaver being a game where we play to a, have fun because maybe you like card games, then rank up and then also get something from it. I don't want to say too much here because the game is not out yet and they don't know the team behind it, but I feel like this might be Axis when it comes to like card games. So in its niche, this might be one of the biggest, if not the biggest card game when it comes to NFT stuff out there. There's also Gods Unchained, which I should review next, but if this is just like the working beta that they have and they're gonna improve that, I'm looking forward to the game, honestly. Only things that I'm concerned about is that they did not link their team on their website. They did not link the white paper. They did not give any information about their token. And if you click on any of those cards, I feel like we can manipulate the price a little bit, especially if, you know, I'm the YouTube guy and I would make a video about this and be like, oh, wow, Air Rune, best card ever. And then in reality, I own the entire supply and I can just sell it for any price. Those are the only concerns I have. I'm gonna be back with more Crypto Blades content the moment they announce anything. I've seen the update on the testnet recently when it comes to rates. So whenever that gets released, should be a good video, maybe. Two last things in the end. I'm going to be sponsored by those two sites over here, just so you know in advance, called Pionex as well as a free cash. Those are just sites where you can do like surveys and play like mobile games and get some points and then redeem that for money. Just so you know, in the next like week or so they're going to be sponsored videos about those. I will give my honest review about those sites because maybe you feel like using their service and get some money. They seemed legit. The team was nice. So I thought I would accept that sponsorship just so you know in advance. And I would say until next time with more NFT gaming content because I like card games and there are a couple out there. I just want to play Gods Unchained next. So there's probably going to be a video about that. And until then, take care.